So, it has not given me a countdown. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, here's what I want to do is I wanted to help you a little bit with this worksheet. I know that the bell rang very quickly. Some of you didn't even get a physical copy. Um, if you need one, like I said, you could come by after school. Nobody came by after school, so I'm assuming you all have printers. I guess if you don't have a printer, you can copy this down on another sheet of paper. So I got the Elmo, got things set up, and I know that you could probably take a screenshot of these halfway through and just... I don't know. I'm just trying to help you. So the idea is not to give you the answers, but to get you started on some of this. Okay. So with this, I have, let me grab a pencil. I've worked through a lot of these already. And some of these I have left because I think you can handle it. Explain the process of the titration of an acid with a base. That's right from the notes. Explain what's going on. And the more detail you can do, the better. One of these, you can see uh, we have titration curve A, an equivalence point right at 7. And this one is titration curve B, equivalence point at 8.72. So this finishes, and these equal, at 8.7. So it finishes off being more basic. Okay, so it asks you a couple questions about those. Um, I think that we can probably do those. I don't think those are the ones that are going to be sticky. So I'm going to save my time and your time for something else. Now... This, let me see if I can do this without showing the answer. There we go. What is the pKa and the Ka of the weak acid? All right. Well, to give it away a little bit, this one is going to be a weak acid, right? Because um, we are starting at a much higher pH, less acidic to start off with. And then our equivalence point finishes off. Now, if we remember from our equivalence point discussion, what we're saying with this is at the equivalence point, we end up having more conjugate base and a stronger conjugate base uh, with a weak acid, right? And then with the strong acid and the strong base, those completely cancel each other out. And all you have here is water and salt. So that's something to keep in mind. At the pKa of the weak acid, there's a couple of things. Once you are halfway to the equivalence point, we have that the pKa is equal to the pH. So you can get your pKa actually from the graph. All right. And then if we wanted to get our Ka, which is our equilibrium constant of that particular acid, we know that the Ka is 10 to the negative pKa or 10 to the negative pH. Okay. So we can figure those out. So that'll give you your pKa because it's the same as the pH. And then to get your Ka, we can do to the negative pH. Let's look at the next page. All right, I've got all the answers here. So I've got some hints on some of this. Because for the following titrations, yes, got a sweet document camera here that's probably about the same age as most of you, maybe older. For the following titrations, determine the molarity of a monoprotic acid. Well, monoprotic, it means that it's just one proton. Most everything we're going to be working with is going to be monoprotic because it gets really complicated after that. So at this, remember at the equivalence point, we have our ma, va, or moles of acid, mol molarity of acid, volume of acid is equal to your molarities of base, volume of base. Basically, the number of moles of acid equal to the number of moles of base. It works at the equivalence. That's the hint I'm going to give you. I think you can figure out the rest. Okay, let me know if you can't, but that's my tip for you. Determine the pKa and the Ka of the following acids based on the titration curve. Again, I know you can screenshot this if you want to get it. Just more importantly that you know how to do it. Well, let's do this. Let's be, let's keep it classy here. And I can cover up some of this stuff. So remember, pKa and Ka. This is like the one on the previous page. I don't want to give you the answer to these because I think you should be able to figure them out. You want to look at this one and see that you have a strong acid and a strong base. Okay. This one, you probably have a weaker acid, but this is your halfway to equivalence point. All right. Uh, this is your equivalence point here. And those are going to influence your pKa and your Ka values, okay? 
And for a weak acid, strong base titration, um, explain why the pH is equal to pKa. Okay, so this is, again, right from your notes. I don't want to give you the answers. Try to do these on your own, but these are here if you need it. Explain the method to determine equivalence by a titration. Okay, well, we have our indicators, and that's going to turn color at the equivalence point. And then we can start to look at these graph and the halfway and all of those things. Okay, let's look at the next page. Uh, number seven, I'm going to give you because I think it's a little bit confusing here. Okay, it says for the titration given below, let's move this guy out of the way here. You don't really need to see me anyway. For the titration given below, determine which species. When it says species, it's not asking for, uh, you know, a Didelphus virginiana or anything like that. It's a Virginia possum, in case you were wondering. Um, a Balaenoptera musculus. There's your blue whale. I could go on. Um, it's not asking for that. It's saying the species is like, what thing is present? What are we looking for? This is our original acid. This is our conjugate base. This is our hydronium ions. And these are hydroxide. So I'm going to explain this. If you'd like to try it, definitely try and take a look at it if you can, but up to you. What we're saying is at point Q, we have the original acid present. Um, we have a little bit of conjugate base. I mean, I guess assuming that we put it in and it goes. And we have hydronium. Okay. And this original acid is present all the way up through T, but it's not present at U. It's been neutralized by the time it gets over here. We start having conjugate base very early. Okay, I suppose I missed the X there. There's still conjugate base there at R, and it becomes the dominant species at S and T because we've gone past that halfway to equivalence point. What we're saying is we now have more. This is about our halfway to the equivalence point. And so at R, you probably would say that these two are both dominant. S could be the equivalence point. Actually, let's do that. I think S is probably our equivalence point, halfway to equivalence. Okay, these are present in all of those. Hydroxide is present here. Um, we can talk more about those later, but there's your answers if you want to work on it. Now, number eight. Um, I haven't done through all of this, but I think you should be able to get started with this. Okay, formic acid. This dissociates in water as shown in the equation above. It gives you the equation. It gives you the equilibrium constant. So now this is kind of like stuff we've been doing before, but what we're doing is a titration and it gives us the resulting pH. And so remember from that, we can figure out where our equivalence point, our halfway equivalence and all of those things. So the, I'll get you started to kind of get you rolling. The concentration of hydrogen ions it's going to be equal to 10 to the negative pH. Remember all of those things that we did in those first couple worksheets that showed these relationships. And then that gives you, this is your concentration. You can use that and some of the other ones. Remember it's relationship to KW and all of those. Okay. I think that should help you get started, not to give you the entire thing. And the last page. These are just some applications of the MAVA, MBVB. All of these are pretty simple, pretty straightforward. 10, I think this is important. Try this, but um, here's the explanation of it. pH of an equivalence is a strong acid, strong base titration, pH 7. Why? Because they completely offset each other. At equivalence, all we have is water and salt. A weak acid, a strong base titration, explain why. It's going to be above 7 because what happens is it starts off higher, because it's a weak acid, and then it's neutralized. And then what we have left is a presence of more conjugate base. After it has been neutralized, we have more conjugate base, which happens to be strong. And what it's going to do is it's going to have a greater affinity for the hydrogen on the water, and it's going to pull that off. And now we have more hydroxide. Weak base, strong acid, it's going to be the opposite. CA means conjugate acid. And so there's the explanation that's just the inverse. Hopefully all that is just a quick video to get you started. And, um, you know, again, try to do these yourself, but I'm more concerned about 
making sure that you understand how to do it. Let me know if you have any questions.